Okay, so let's put some of that, uh, some of the properties that we just learned about to work. Uh, so we'll look at, uh, these are going to ask us to find the exact value. Do the sine of 13 pi over 3. Well, 12 thirds is 4, which is an integer, so we'll turn this into the sine of 1 pi over 3 plus 12 pi over 3. So that is then the sine of pi over 3 plus 4 pi over 3. Oh, I drew that 3 there. Uh, not over 3 either. Pi over 3 plus 4 pi. So this is then the same as just the sine of pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3. Pi over 3, remember, is 60 degrees, so that is root 3 over 2 from your unit circle. All right, so next we'll play with a cotangent. Cotangent of 17 pi over 6. Well, 12 pi over 6 is a nice, neat, pretty integer. So we'll make this the cotangent of 5 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. So it's the cotangent of 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. So this is just 5 pi over 6 and we spun around two extra times. So that's the same as the cotangent of 5 pi over 6. So this one, just make a little sketch. So pi over 6, remember, is 30 degrees. So 6 pi over 6 would be 1 pi. So this is 30 degrees shy of 180 degrees. So this one is at, on the unit circle, negative 1, 0. So this is at negative root 3 over 2, positive 1 half. So cotangent, remember, is x over y. So negative root 3 over 2 divided by a half is the same thing as times 2. So negative root 3 would be our exact value. All right. So identity work next. Just a reminder, sine theta, 1 over the cosecant of theta. And cosecant theta, then, of course, would also be the reciprocal of the sine theta. And you can make similar ones for cosine. Reciprocal of secant. Secant is reciprocal of cosine. And the tangent and cotangent, there's a couple different ways to express those quotient identities. Tangent theta, either the reciprocal of cotangent theta or cosine theta over sine theta. Cotangent theta, either re reciprocal of tangent theta. My apologies. I had cotangent on the brain, sine theta or cosine theta. Cotangent is cosine theta or sine theta. So the cotangent down there got too excited, too ahead of myself there. So those are our reciprocal and quotient identities. So the six basic 
trig functions relate to one another without including x's and y's necessarily. So if we're given, let's say, sine of theta is 24 25ths. And cosine of theta is 7 25ths. They could ask us to find the remaining trig functions. So on this one, I like to just kind of draw it out. So here's our theta, here's our right angle. So sine is y over hypotenuse. Cosine is x over hypotenuse, so x here is 7. So we have a 7, 24, 25 triangle. So the cosecant of theta is just the reciprocal of sine, so that is 25, 24. Secant theta is reciprocal of cosine, so 25, 7. Tangent theta sine over cosine, so 24 25ths over 7 25ths, so 24 25ths times 25 7 or just 24 7 which then would make our cotangent 7 24 without any extra fanfare. All right, some other important identities. I want to fit all these into one page, so just leave a little extra room there. So these are key. These are going to be uh, very, very handy tools to have. So recall if we are on the unit circle, we have a radius of one, and we have our x and our y. So x squared plus y squared would have to equal one, or y squared plus x squared you can say is one. Well, if we want to, let me make a bigger, easier to see version of that. So there's our theta, there's our radius of one, here's our x, here's our y. Uh, recall that sine theta on the unit circle is just y, since y over one is just y, and cosine theta is just x, since x over one is just x. So by this Pythagorean identity, we have sine squared theta, plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. And of course you have as corollaries to that, corollaries just uh, sort of an immediate sort of freebie result. Sine squared is one minus cosine squared. Cosine squared is one minus sine squared. But if you know this one, these two are just automatic. Now that one actually helps us get uh, the next two important ones. If we have secant squared minus tangent squared. We'll attach thetas to those, of course. Let's translate these uh, into sines and cosines. That's, uh, in general, something that can be very helpful uh, working with things in trig and uh, cal later on. So secant is a reciprocal of cosine, 
and tangent is sine over cosine, so tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. Notice each of these is something over cosine squared. So then we can say we have one minus sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. But notice one minus sine squared theta is cosine squared. So now we have cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta. So this is a one. So this is another identity to get to know. Secant squared minus tangent squared is a one. Uh, there's a similar one for having sines at the bottom instead of cosines at the bottom. So that would be cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. This will also give you a 1. Let me prove that to you. Cosecant squared theta is a reciprocal of sine squared theta. Cotangent squared theta is cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. Common denominator here is sine squared theta. Numerator is now 1 minus cosine squared theta. 1 minus cosine squared theta is sine squared theta. So we have sine squared theta over sine squared theta. Sure enough, that is the one that we were promised. So these are three very important identities. These are crucial ones to know. They're sometimes referred to as the Pythagorean identities. So they can uh, have us use those to find some exact values as well. So for example, this next one, they don't tell me what theta is, but they want an exact value for an answer. Eight sine squared theta plus eight divided by secant squared theta. So secant itself is a reciprocal, so secant at the bottom I would rather put it at the top and put it at the top as a cosine squared. So eight sine squared theta, I'm gonna hang on to that for a minute. And we have plus eight cosine squared theta. Uh, also, I noticed that we've got a common factor here of 8. I'll grab that common factor. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, so I have 8 times 1, or just 8. Next one, they want us to find the remaining trig values. So let's see, they give us that sine of theta is negative two sevenths, and all they tell us is that cosine of theta is greater than zero.